Hi, I'm Joe Connolly with producer Neelay Caruso with a woman you may want to know and do business with. Rachel Mang Brown is co-founder of the interestingly named Loot Agency, L-O-O-T, as in make more loot for your business by using Rachel's business to find you the right social media influencers. That's what her business does. She finds social media influencers for businesses. So does this mean, Rachel, micro-influencers? Yeah, it. Uh, most of our clients, most of our influencers are kind of in that micro and macro. We have anywhere from 100,000 followers all the way up to about 5.7 million is our largest. So it can really be in that whole range. Um, really, both micro and macro are good to use for marketing as well. So then is 100,000, is that what you define a micro influencer, someone with 100,000 followers? So that 100,000, that's kind of starting to get up to that macro, but 100,000 followers is a really good place to start. A lot of times those creators get a lot of really good engagement. How do you find them? So funny enough, I actually used to be a creator. Um, I was part of the initial Learn on TikTok program back in 2020. Uh, I was a partner there and I used to create content, but I really quickly realized I was much better on the management side. Uh, so from that time that I was a creator, I had gotten a lot of relationships with other creators, had brought a lot onto my roster. And then from there, it's kind of word of mouth. Uh, the creator world, the influencer world, it is very much like once you hear a really good manager or like a really good creator, it kind of just goes from there that like you suggest another creator or you suggest another manager for someone. You started this when you were still at Rutgers, did you? No. So actually, when I was at Rutgers, I was a student athlete. Um, I had a lot of internships in sports. I had a lot of internships in marketing and media. And then I actually started this company with my co-founders back in 2021. So just at the start of this year. And before we get to Neil, a new growing area is using college athletes as influencers. Yeah, that's a really big area. Um, the NIL passed back in July, right at the start of the month. And that's actually a space that we're pretty uh, heavy into as well. We not only help student athletes learn a little bit more about how they can become an influencer and also how they can protect themselves legally, tax wise, all of that. But we also uh, help colleges learn a little bit more for their student athletes about what this whole space of the NIL is, like what they can do, what they can't do, and what might be some really good areas that their student athletes can work in, whether it be social media or even something like a commercial or just promoting a restaurant. Neil? Joe, uh, this is a space that I'm very interested in. And, you know, Rachel, love your story. And with the college space that you're going into, obviously a, a growing market now with the recent Supreme Court decision, mm -hmm. I wonder how do you, um, what, do you what do you teach them first? What, what's the first lesson? Because that's not an easy space to, to get into yeah. for a collegiate athlete. Many of them don't make it to the pros either. Yeah, I think there are so many things you can teach them. And I think when I had initially approached it, I talked a lot about personal branding because something I learned in sales too is every day is an interview and your personal brand is so important for people to not only believe in you, but when you talk about marketing for people to believe in your product. Um, so that's something that I first start out teaching them, but now it's kind of pivoted. I realized that a lot of companies and brands are always looking towards these influencers and these creators to market their products. But there's a whole space of student athletes now because of the NIL that are really good marketers as well. And they also have a really great platform from being a student athlete. So my whole goal with the student athletes nowadays is really just getting them to understand not only their personal brand, but also how to be an influencer, how to use their personal brand to market products and how to do it responsibly. And when we talk about influencers, I think a lot of people kind of see that as a, you know, big buzzword. And really, I think what it means is someone who has a loyal audience online mm -hmm. and they're known for something. You've worked with clients like TurboTax, Macy's. How do you hook these people up, make the connection so that a big brand like that that may not actually have the, you know, they want to tap into that loyal following. They may not have the millennial audience. So how do you tap into uh, to that influencer's audience and grow sales ultimately for that client. Yeah. So really an influencer, you're right. It's completely a buzzword. Uh, it just means a person of influence. And when we're talking about in the modern marketing age, it really is these creators, these people online who have this good following, but also a loyal following. 
So when we're talking about connecting a brand and connecting a creator with their audience, it's really, we already have a wheelhouse of creators that we currently work with on our roster, but it's helping the brand connect to these creators. So through us, we help prospect, negotiate, and then manage the relationship. But on top of that, we also help with the content deliverables. We also look into the campaigns and make sure they're running correctly. We make sure that the campaign makes sense for their audience because their audience are loyal followers. So we wanna make sure that whatever brand our creators are working with are also brands that our creator would not only use, but that they would suggest for their audience too. Rachel, just so everybody knows, NIL that you mentioned stands mm -hmm. for? Name, image, and likeness. So that's um, kind of like a buzzword that people have been using, but it just refers to the law that was passed saying that student athletes can now be paid for their name, image, and likeness. Your website says, first step, know your story. Yes. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Do some people not realize that they have a story to tell? Because this could apply also to business owners doing their own videos as their own influencers. Yeah, I think 100%. Um, even kind of to answer that last question first, I think there are so many creators online that were first business owners. They're first startup owners. They were first um, even working like a nine to five and they have their own story that I think is so important for followers and also just the general audience to hear about because everybody has a story and that relates to your personal brand and every personal brand and story someone can relate to. So I think by getting your personal brand and your story out there, it can actually help other people, whether you are an influencer or whether even for myself, like I'm a young female woman of color in business, in marketing and in sports and you know I've learned as I've gone along in this journey that there are people who can relate to me that maybe my story could help them as well and that's kind of how I treat my relationship with my creators with our businesses even with our startup founders that there's always something in your story that could help someone else tell us more then so maybe your story is I was a great high school football player or something or basketball player do you say that or do you just assume that people know that by what you're talking about? How do you then tell your story once you identify it? Yeah, I think so much of being an influencer or even just being someone that people can relate to in the public eye, it's about being authentic and being consistent. So you might be a college athlete and let's say that you're becoming an influencer or you're starting up your social media or you want to work in the NIL space. Like your story is really who you are, how you got to where you are. Maybe even the struggles that you face right now, whether it be like a really hard practice or it might be you trying to discover this NIL space. So even that story itself is something that you can just start telling, whether it be um, talking to other student athletes, whether it be doing like a Q&A on your social media. But there are so many different ways that you can just tell people your story. And sometimes that can get a lot of attraction from your audience and it can grow your audience. It can grow your following. And then from there, sometimes a brand might attach to it really well and really resonate. And then that kind of builds a relationship where then you can kind of tie in um, a marketing agency like ourselves, where maybe we can help tell your story, but also have a brand sponsor you where they feel really comfortable using their product to pitch to your audience. And my final question, I want to bear in on this. Would you at some point say, I, you know, I studied hard, I became a great athlete, and now I shop at Macy's or Smith's Sporting Goods? D do you mention the name of the business or, or not? Yeah, so there's actually FTC guidelines about what um, creators can say and can't say, making sure they say hashtag sponsored, hashtag ad, basically letting the audience know that they're being paid for this promotion. So there are things you can and can't say, but regardless, when you are promoting like a brand or you're promoting a product, you would let them know, like you're going to use your story, you're going to use whatever, you know, is organic to your regular feed in your post. But then a lot of times how we integrate is we switch in that little brand. So if we're talking about like somebody's skin journey, like where they may have some rough skin, and it's something that happen because they're in and out of the cold tub so much as being an athlete. And then they talk about Jergens because Jergens might be the skincare that they actually use to help them combat their dry skin. It's a really easy and really seamless transition into like using a marketing brand partner. It's a great example and it's not oppressive. It's not overwhelming. 
Neil, yeah, one more. A lot of times it's organic and it's authentic yeah. too, because I was a student athlete and there are so many times I was sitting in cold tubs, like after workouts and like your skin really does dry out. <laughs> Neil. So Rachel, I want to go back to something that Joe actually said mm -hmm. before, which is a lot of businesses are doing videos and are looking to use that in this acceleration to digital. So what advice would you have for a business owner who's looking to produce content? What's most effective? What would you say they should do? I think something that you can do that is really easy is that initial research. In marketing terms, everybody does their initial research. They look at their competitors. And I think that something that's come about now with this rise of influencers and creators is actually looking at influencers and creators kind of as a way to almost replicate, copy, and get ideas. Because there's already a proven way that is successful for creators to get their message out there, whether they're a business owner, whether they're a creator talking about their story. And I think that you can kind of replicate that and also learn from it, like what was successful and what audiences resonate with. And I think that that's something that's come up because of this whole rise of influencer marketing. What's the website people can go to, Rachel, for you? Yep, it's lootagency.co. L-O-O-T agency.co. Yep. And it's been great to talk to you. I want to tell people a couple of things about Rachel. Uh, one is that she was a member of the Rutgers rowing team. And also, and I think we can see why, Rachel was named to a new kind of business list titled 20 in their 20s. <laughs> and Rachel is uh, 25. Ha has been being on that list driven you any new business or do you already have more business than you can handle, Rachel? <laughs> We have a lot of business. And I think that one thing that's been really great is uh, being a startup founder and also just being able to lead the company as well. I've had the ability to take on a lot of new projects and also kind of run with ideas that I have. And that's been something that's such a blessing because it's allowed us to not only have me on the 20 in their 20s list, but also to get into the NIL space, to get into professional athlete space, to get into our event space because we have a house coming up in Austin, Texas. So it's just uh, allowed us to grow so quickly. Um, it's really been amazing. Great for you. <laughs> Fantastic story. You're going to do so well. Hope to talk to you again sometime, Rachel. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me.